What's good, everybody? This is your SA, your homie, your partner, your Latino, your Chicano, whatever y'all want to call me, man. It's me. What's cracking, everybody? This one right here is going to be a little different. Well, it's not even different. It's just, it's just been a minute since I did this, this type of thing. We're going to do a Selena. It's related to Selena. Not a Selena. It's related to Selena. We're going to watch the interview they did with her killer, Yolanda. Oof. And I'm only doing this one because of some requests that people wanted Selena, more Selena. So I was like, man, you know what? I'm going to do it today. But I saw this, this little clip of the interview they did about her uh, with her killer. So I, I want to do that first before I do a song, right? But before we get started, you already know the deal, man. Hit the subscribe button. Follow your homie. Let's get just keep going this channel. I'm over two G's already. So hey, thank you guys for all y'all subscribers that have been doing it. They've been pushing me. That been you know me that have been on me. That have been requesting and supporting me from the get go, man. Thank you guys. Salud, saludos. Shout out. Gracias. Lo que sea. But yeah, man. I'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. I'm gonna with this intro. But y'all know while I'm going, get your blood, get your liquor, whatever y'all do to chew with me, and vibe with me, and watch this reaction, this video. Go get that ready for yourself, man. I'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. Hit the subscribe button. I'll be right back. <laughs> Man, what's up with this blurriness, man? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I can't even skip this shit, man, because it'll... Man, what's up with this blurriness? All right, there it goes. All right, let's get it, guys. Uh, this one is right here. Subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the subscribe. All right. This is Yolanda Saldivar interview, 1998. Uh, she she killed her because of the greediness, the 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 jealousy, the I don't know what else, but yeah. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy, man. You become you're a fan of somebody. You do everything to join their group, and then when you join their group, you you envy them so much where you start hating them for all their their the other their fame. All the love she's giving everybody, all the love she's receiving, and you not, and you just kill them for some stupid. Let's go, man. Salvador is serving a life sentence for the murder of Selena Quintanilla Perez. You understand? Twenty-four years ago, to her fans, it's tremendous, and not only to them but to me. But they want to know why you killed her. I won't discuss that. See, that's what we want to know, man. Like, if you're already convicted, if you're already doing the time, let mom know why you did it, man. Just let it out, man. Why you keep, why do they keep, not just her, but everybody that kills somebody and gets caught and, or they admit it, whatever it is, they never want to give the reason why they did what they did. And that's what we want to know the most, man. Like, why? Just let us know, man. If, if if she's alive, bro, if they I, I they need they need to re-interview her again and just be like, hey, look, you're gonna die soon, man. Just let her know why you killed her. Come on, man, give us a hint. Throw us, a, you know, throw some crumbs, you know, man. But man, that's you know what I mean. Like, am I tripping or is it just me? You are already doing the time. Just let the motherfuckers know why you did it. We know why you jealousy and shit. You know what I mean? But what's the real reason behind it? Because the truth is not out. So tell it. Not in the court of law. You've had your day in court. Why didn't you tell it then? I was not given an opportunity to defend myself. I was represented. She's going to say, oh, Selena was trying to kill me, so I defended myself and I killed her. <laughs> Which is different. You're not that important Yolanda, in her life. At that time, your life depended on it. If there is this information that if it doesn't exonerate you, at least gives context as to why Selena Quintanilla is dead, why would you not have demanded that that be presented in court to spare your life? Because there is no. If I knew then what I know now, you can rest assured that my trial wouldn't have gone the way it is, or that it was. I can assure you that. During the course of a two hour interview, Yolanda was continually evasive, bolstering the public image that she's clever, cunning, and manipulative. While her conviction is. is on appeal, Yolanda's reluctance to answer certain questions is understandable. But then, as the interview continues, she jumps. Yo, she got the Eminem nose, bro. You know what I mean? That McDonald nose, boy. You know what I mean? The big ass nostrils that go up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, that's a creepy ass smile right there, though. Hey, that's a killer smile right there without makeup. That's the clown killer right there without makeup. Look at that. Damn. Trump said an opportunity to supposedly tell all. This is a letter. 
that your family has said you received here in prison. Is it? Mm-hmm. Behind the music was given two letters by the Saldivar family prior to this interview. They are allegedly from a man named Lorenzo Salinas, who Yolanda says she and Selena met while doing business in Mexico in early 95. The Texas Department of Corrections confirms the letters were mailed from outside the prison. But during an exhaustive seven-month investigation, Behind the Music was unable to find Lorenzo Salinas or confirm his existence. He tells me exactly what I've been saying all along. Which is what? That he feels his conscience is killing him because he knows the truth and he knows that he feels that or he thinks that I have things that will eventually say it all. Ah, damn, the, she, she, the way she's talking is creepy as hell, man. Hold on, my seat went down. Oh, shit. <laughs> My bad, I got this, I got this Motel C, man. That shit just went down on me. I like, felt like a low rider. Yeah, but she sounds creepy, though, man, this interview, bro. She's been out there for so long, and she, boy. And... Do you? Well, eventually, say it all. And... Do you? Yes. Yolanda claims that two weeks prior to the murder, she discovered videotapes damaging to Selena's career, and that she had a diary of Selena's that corroborated information on the tapes. In his purported letter, Lorenzo Salinas claims he was hired to beat up Yolanda to retrieve the tapes and diary as part of a plot to extort Selena. Yolanda claims she was attacked, but managed to get away. You know where those tapes are now? Exactly. You know where that diary is now? I know where they're at. Yolanda contends they remain where she stashed them in a safe deposit box in Monterey, Mexico. Why is that information significant to the death of Selena Quintanilla? Because that is many of the things that were discussed that day. It was not about the embezzlement. It was not about no upset fan or being fired. It had nothing to do with that. What Yolanda won't explain is why, if she was protecting Selena, she instead killed her. Yolanda's uh, state of mind is an issue in this, in this case. San Antonio attorney Ramiro Estrada has been retained by the Saldivar family. He says while the information in Mexico may not exonerate Yolanda, it will somehow shed light on her state of mind in the days leading up to the murder. Estrada hopes the alleged evidence will open the door for a second trial and a reduced sentence. I think Yolanda knows that she needs this information to be found. Yolanda empowered Estrada to retrieve the supposed evidence and behind the music accompanied him to Monterey, Mexico. Isn't there a chance, maybe even a pretty good chance, that Yolanda's lying to us about this evidence? Well, I think anything's possible, but... It would, see, it would serve no purpose. It would not help her to be, to be perpetrating a lie. Yolanda and the Saldivar family directed Estrada to more than a half dozen different bank locations. I don't see what good it would do for her to be sending us on a, on a wild goose chase. I mean, it's not, certainly not going to help her in a trial. But a wild goose chase it proved to be. There was no safe deposit box, no tape, no diary, no evidence. You're disappointed that this evidence hasn't been found. Sure. Sure. Great night. Following the trip, Estrada revealed he intends to remove himself from Yolanda's case. Whether the extortion plot, videotapes, and diary are fact or Yolanda's fiction remains unknown and may never be known as Yolanda reveals in one smug answer. I guess I'll take it to my grave. In San Antonio, Yolanda Saldivar, a 31-year-old nurse who frankly didn't like Tejano music until she saw Selena perform, started a fan club. You're in your early 30s, you have a career as a nurse. Fan clubs are usually for people who are a lot younger. What, what was compelling you to do? Going through my college years, I had no social life. I had none, because I, I devoted myself to 
my university, my career, my, my license. Now it was time for me to have fun. So tell me about your first meeting. Boy, she looked creepy as hell, man. Like meeting Whitney Houston. <laughs> At first, they don't see each other often, essentially only when Selena plays San Antonio. I was their gopher, so to speak, in San Antonio. But you loved it. Yes. It was a touch of celebrity. Well, actually, in San Antonio, Texas. Well, not only that, but it was because my friends. It was Suzette and it was Selena. I did it for them. But you had to have enjoyed the fact that your friends were becoming such celebrities. Well, that too. At one time, my whole family liked Yolanda. You know, we would invite her to come eat at our house. You would have a get together and we'd invite her. It was that our friendship had gone from being just a fan celebrity type to this personal type of relationship. When Selena decided, made the decision to uh, open up the boutiques, she needed someone to run them. And there was Yolanda, her trusted friend who had never let her down, who was always there for her. And I'm the one that suggested, well, what about that girl that runs a fan club in San Antonio? She looks pretty, you know, like a nice person. And that's how Yolanda came into the picture. It was then that she hired me in 94. Even though you had no business experience? Even though I had no business experience, no. She didn't know anything about retail, and that's basically, come on, you need Retail 101 to manage a retail space. And I think that that's where things started unraveling. Both Martin Gomez and Yolanda agree that from the very beginning, they are in each other's throat. Not just about business, but over access to Selena. Gomez contends the stage was being set for Selena to be deceived and controlled by an obsessive Yolanda. She's made it very clear to me that in order for me to speak to her, to speak to Selena, I have to go by her. He started seeing that his contact with Selena was becoming less and less. Martin says that the reason his time was less and less is because you were becoming obsessed with Selena. That's not true. Yolanda derived her popularity with people because of her association with Selena. And if anyone else was going to get closer to her, her to Selena, or, or get her ear, uh, that was a threat to Yolanda. And by mm -hmm. virtue of being the creator of these designs, Martin Gomez was a threat. By now, Gomez says Yolanda was trying to wrest control of Selena's life. It was neurotic. It was neurotic and it was strange, fanatical. Um, Selena would come to visit and then she'd leave and she goes, oh, I miss her. I go, she just left. She didn't want to be bothered. Martin can understand that. So you're assuming a bigger role. Definitely. Could that role be construed as becoming obsessed? I don't know where people are getting this, that I'm obsessed with Selena. It, it was a duty that she expected me to do and I had to do it I was starting to recognize her just basically being controlling and trying to manipulate Selena I was I was starting to you know I was trying to identify that and more than anything I was going to Abraham with the information see you, you gotta understand that Martin and Yolanda uh, are like two old women bickering at each other while that bickering must certainly be wearing two old women <laughs> Abraham stays clear of it and had no problem with Yolanda until the beginning of 1995 is that the beginning of the end exactly. of your relationship with Abraham that becomes the fury of it all that fury is about to spill over you have vilified Dr. Martinez Abraham Quintanilla why weren't those the people that were attacked why your best friend there was never an intentional to kill Selena. Never. There was never an intentional to do anything wrong to Abraham either or Dr. Martinez. My intention was to relieve myself from all of that. You were going to kill yourself? Yes. Well, why did you right there, she's playing the victim card. She's she's being seen, uh, uh, portrayed as the, as, the, as the attacker, the woo-woo, and she's trying to best to minimize that and become the victim in the situation. I wanted to kill myself, but she stopped me. Woo, 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 woo. And then something happened, woo, woo, and I shot her. An accident. She grabbed the gun and it went off. Did you end up killing your best friend? I didn't kill her. 
All right, man, Nick, I just want to play that little clip, man, because I don't have any kind of uh, uh, interviews, uh, reactions in a minute. So I just want to do that one. Now that I did that, I'm going to do a Selena song. And that's what it is, man. So look, do what y'all do, man. Hope you guys like this video. Hope y'all enjoyed a little flashback of this damn Yolanda female character, the Selena assassinator. They, yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying. I ain't gonna say nothing more, man. But hey, hey, don't forget, man, subscribe to the channel, y'all. Show me some love. Let's keep this channel going. It's going up. I'm already at 2K, so let's keep it going, man. Let's go for three now. You know what I'm saying? You guys are rocking with me. Y'all growing with me. I want to know, man, if you guys are watching this, how long you guys been following my channel, man. So, yeah, let me know in the comment section. Until then, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Follow me on TikTok, Instagram, all that good stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, this is your homie. That is a Devato, the Mexican, Chicano, Latino, whatever y'all want to call me, man. That's me. I am out. Until the next one. That's it.